Hello, and welcome to this episode of Chart Schools Look at Chart Lists. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and uh, I'm really excited to share with you the way uh, I like to look at uh, chart lists, how I use chart lists in my everyday trading, and also how we incorporate it into our service at EarningsBeats.com. This is a major component of trading for us. It allows us the opportunity to organize all of our work and to organize it for our members. And so it plays a key role. Now, I like to look at the market from a few different ways. I'm a prior practicing CPA. So not only do I like to look at the technical side of things, but I also like to look at the fundamentals. I like to study the earnings. I go through and look at literally hundreds of earnings reports every quarter, and I categorize those or, or organize those in chart lists. So combining that along with the technicals, along with the seasonality, gives us an opportunity really to uh, to you know, really zero in on the types of trades that we want to make. So let's get started with this lesson. All right, so let's get started with the uh, first chart list that I want to share with you. This is um, what we call our strong earnings chart list. So again, what, what we try to do at Earnings Beats and what I do is I want to um, categorize these various um, you know, strategies and put them into their own chart list. So that, uh, you know, it, it just makes it much more organized, much more um, neat, so that when we're ready to look for trading candidates, we have everything we need within our chart list. So I, like I said, strong earnings chart list, I would say this is our flagship chart list at uh, Earnings Beats. I spend a lot of time going through looking for strong earnings reports. So the only way a company is going to get on this particular chart list is if it beats Wall Street estimates as to both revenues and earnings per share. Um, it's going to also need to be liquid. You know, I want to make sure that it trades at least a couple hundred thousand shares a day for our members. I don't want members to be uh, trading stocks that are illiquid. And then uh, I, I take a brief look at the technicals as well. So a stock or a company that's reported great results, but it's in a long-term downtrend and has been underperforming its peers is not going to get onto this list. Now, I'm going to pull this chart up, and I just want to show you that when you click this View All button, you'll see, um, you know, you can go through, the default is to go through and look at these charts 10 per page. You'll also notice that I have annotated uh, various support levels, usually just one or two key support levels that I like to put on uh, for our members just to be aware of when they're looking at their charts. Um, but if you go in here and you click on Edit, you'll see that there are 489 companies right now on this chart list. So I'm able to essentially know that these are 489 of the best earnings reports that came out over the last 90 days. And then after the 90 days expires, these companies come out with their next quarterly report, they get dismissed from this list. And then if they happen to have another great report, they'll be added back on, but otherwise they're off uh, until they come back with a solid report. So this is, like I said, our flagship. This is where uh, we get a lot of our trading ideas. We run scans against all of our chart lists, but I would say our strong earnings chart list is the one that we feature most often. And this is really more of a fundamental chart list than it is technical, although I did say, you know, the technicals do matter. We want to make sure that they're, these are companies that are trending well, that are in strong groups, or at least are leaders. Uh, so there is a technical component, but for the most part, they're on this list because they have strong fundamentals. Um, another um, list that I can show you, and if you go over to our um, earningsbeats.com uh, website, this is what our members see, chart lists. So when you scroll down, um, we have a number of chart lists that we allow our members to download from our website. So I just uh, talked about the strong earnings chart list, the SECL, that's uh, right here. Um, very simple. You just literally, if you're a, a Stock Charts member, in addition to being an Earnings Beats member, you can simply copy the password, click on the link that we provide, and then paste that password and then download the entire chart list right into your account. So 489 companies where I do all the research, all the earnings research for, literally you can download into your account in just a few seconds. Um, another chart list, well, we can go through all these chart lists and I'll, I'll pull them up one at a time and show you a little bit. Um, about them. But the relative strength industry group chart list is just a simple uh, review of the 104 industry charts, but it's on a relative basis to the S&P 500. 
and it's a three-year weekly chart. So we can see rather quickly as we scroll through this, these 104 charts, which areas are leading the market. That's really important because from our trading perspective, we want to make sure we're in the leading stocks in the leading industry groups. And the way we know which groups are leading industry groups are by following the relative strength. Next up, accumulation distribution chart lists. Now, this is more of a technical uh, chart list because all we're doing is we're looking at the AD line, the accumulation distribution line. Um, there's also a requirement we want to make sure that the scooters are high. And if you're not familiar with scooters, that's stock charts technical rank developed by John Murphy. It's a relative strength uh, number where you're comparing stocks within the same asset class. So large caps against large caps, small caps against small caps, ETFs against ETFs, that sort of thing. But if you have a scooter score above 80, it's telling you that you're in the 80 percentile or above um, relative to the other stocks within your asset class and based upon the formula that was developed by John Murphy. So here's a little, you know, this is an, another component, a relative strength component that you need to, to uh, achieve in addition to the, um, the technical AD line and what that's been doing. So we want an AD line that's rising and we want high relative strength. That's what goes on this chart list. Then we move down to the earnings AD chart list. This is uh, simply looking at the day after companies report earnings. What do they do from, their, from the opening bell to the closing bell? And the ones that do the best Obviously, if you're closing above your open, if you're familiar, if you're familiar with uh, candlesticks, then you know that you're going to have a hollow candlestick if you're closing above your open. And we don't want just any old hollow candlestick. We want the big hollow candlesticks. We want companies that are rising at a minimum of 4% above their opening price. They have to close the day after earnings at least 4% above their open. Um, and there were 60 of these that we updated last time in September. Um, we'll be updating this again very soon as earnings continue to pour in. But this just gives us a better sense of companies that are showing the potential for very strong accumulation. Keep in mind that companies, when they report their earnings, typically have very heavy volume. So you're getting heavy volume, and then you're also getting intraday moves well above the open. That could be a um, you know, recipe for strong accumulation. So we have our earnings AD chart list. Then we get into short squeeze chart list. Uh, we've been following short squeezes for quite some time. I actually wrote an article back in September of 2020 talking about GameStop and how it could be the mother of all short squeezes. And it turned out the stock at the time I wrote about it was about six or $7. It went to 500 because of the massive short interest that was in the stock. So we have a chart list of short squeeze uh, stocks, potential short squeeze stocks. So these are all companies that have short percentage of float above 20%. Then you get into the strong future earnings chart list. So we have the strong earnings chart list, but what about those companies that didn't necessarily post strong earnings in their last quarter, but are now trading really strong on a technical basis? Well, those we like to put into another chart list, which is purely technical, strong future earnings chart list. And again, we like to make sure the scooter scores that they're showing relative strength. Um, and then of course, they can't already be on the strong earnings chart list. We want to make, make this an independent list of companies that did not beat um, revenue and, and earnings estimates in their last quarter, but they're trading like they're going to beat in the next quarter. So strong future earnings chart list. Then we have a raised guidance chart list. This is again, more fundamental. The raised guidance chart list is going to feature companies that, as you guessed it, have raised guidance within the last 90 days. So if you're interested in companies maybe that have strong earnings, that have raised guidance, and also maybe have strong AD lines, well, I'll show you at the end of this how you can put those chart lists together in a scan and literally zero in on what could be some of the best uh, stock candidates for trading. Then you can see October seasonality chart list. We'll actually be updating this uh, either today or tomorrow for the November seasonality chart list. But what we do is every month we take the 20 companies that are among the best performing stocks during that particular calendar month. And this is on a historical basis going back the last couple of decades. Um, and we look at both 
S&P 500 stocks and NASDAQ 100 stocks, although I do want to expand this uh, in the fairly near uh, future. Then you can see we have portfolio chart lists. So we have four stock portfolios that we put 10 equal weighted stocks into each one of these portfolios, and then we track them. And uh, for the most part, they've crushed the S&P 500. We do this every 90 days. And what we're looking for are leading stocks in leading industry groups, equal weighted across 10 different stocks. So when you're looking at the four portfolios, essentially you're looking at 40 different stocks because we haven't for the, well, we have occasionally had crossovers, but for the most part, we put 10 different stocks in each of these four portfolios. And then when we go through, we have a webinar, we could have a special webinar. We generally will put together a portfolio, Max Payne dealing with options the third Friday of every month is one that we have almost every, um, uh, every month. Um, earnings reactions. Um, so this could be you know, just a special type of a, a webinar that we had that we put a chart list together for that members can download. And then finally, this is an important one here, especially if you're not familiar with earnings beats, because this is the upcoming earnings chart lists. And these are free to anyone who is a member of our, of our um, EB Digest newsletter. It's a free newsletter. So if you go to our, our homepage, um, and I'm going to start showing you some of these chart lists, but if you go to our homepage at Earnings Beats and scroll down, you'll see an opportunity where you can uh, subscribe to our free newsletter. All right. So let's go ahead and let's take a look back at these earnings uh, or these chart lists. So the first one, the strong earnings chart list, which I started off uh, talking about, you can see we try to annotate key support levels to watch. Um, and then it's up to our members whether or not they want to trade them as they hit these support levels, maybe trade them if they're crossing over moving averages, maybe when their PPO crosses their trigger line, their signal. Um, it could be any kind of uh, a trade. But the strong earnings lets you know that any stock on this chart list has already been vetted as to earnings. And, um, and I think that's really critical in, in knowing that. Uh, and it's also critical when you run scans, technical scans against this list, because you know fundamentally these are strong stocks. So you can just simply go through and scroll down each of these stocks uh, or each of these charts. But this one has 400 and what did I say, 489 charts in it. Um, four, 489, yeah. So going through and looking at all these one by one is kind of tough. But if you're a member at Stock Charts and there's a free 30 day trial at Stock Charts, you should check it out, um, get your trial, and start working with these chart lists. It'll make a big difference in your trading. I promise you. You want to make sure that you are organized when you're doing your trading. All right, so let's move on. Let's look at another one. I mentioned the strong future earnings. Right now, 322 companies I have on this list. Remember, none of these 322 are on the uh, strong earnings chart list. These are separate companies that are showing strength, but didn't uh, report solid earnings and revenues in their last quarter. They didn't beat estimates or they're getting ready to report. So they got pulled off of the other strong earnings chart list and they've been added here because the various conditions that we look for, the high scooter score and so forth, all meets our criteria. So again, you could pull these up and take a look at them one by one. You can see, so AB clearly trending higher, looks very strong, ACLS, Excellus Technologies just breaking out, making a move, nice volume. So that's what you're going to see with this particular chart list. You're going to see stocks that are showing uh, some nice strength. Next up, raised guidance. So again, companies that raise their guidance, and I'll pull this up in the uh, edit so you can see how many are on here. 563 companies over the last three months raising guidance. We've got them all on our chart list. Then we go to the short squeeze chart list. This is probably one of my favorites. I know a lot of our members love this chart list. There are times when there's nothing to do. You should just sit on your hands. But when this, these stocks start moving, and I know uh, I'm just going to pull up the summary so you can see some of these stocks today that are moving. OCGN, it's up 16% today. FUBO, 10%. CNK, 9 8 for FUV, OTRK, 8%. There's only 45 companies right here, five of them are up more than 8% today, one up 16%. So, and the volume starting to really pick up on these stocks. And that's when you start getting into 
uh, potential short squeezes. For instance, look at OCGN here, trending higher. One of the things I look for in this particular chart list are companies with their PPO above zero because we want momentum to be strong. You don't want to try and catch bottoms in com companies that are heavily shorted. You want the bottoms to have already formed and to have these stocks start coming up because what you know about this stock right now today is that if you look back over the last five or six months, anyone that shorted this stock is underwater and the volume's picking up. So what do these folks do? If you're shorting a stock, let's say you shorted it at $9. In order to buy it back, you're at almost $14. You're looking at a 50% move to the upside above where you shorted it. How much pain are you willing to take? That's the problem when you short is your, your losses are unlimited. Your gains are limited. Stock can only go to zero. That's the most you're going to make is whatever you shorted it for. That's assuming it goes to zero, which probably not going to. But if it goes the other way, you have unlimited losses to the upside as a short, if you're shorting. So we try to take advantage of that on the long side. And when shorts start getting squeezed and they have to start buying and covering, that's when you can get some huge, huge moves to the upside. So another reason that uh, we do what we do is we put these uh, short squeeze stocks together to give us an opportunity to, um, uh, to, to profit and benefit from others' miseries. I mean, you hate to say that, but anybody who's shorting and getting heavily involved on the short side, if it starts to go against you, uh, it can get really painful really fast. All right. Uh, so next up, let's take a look at that strong AD portfolio. So I just updated this one. And again, best performer, you can see this a company just reported its earnings. Um, just broke out with its earnings report today. But when you pull these chart lists up in summary fashion like this, you can see all the best performers. Not only that, but we know these have strong ADs, which means essentially that they're, they seem to be accumulated. That's what a strong AD line does. It tells us that there's a better chance that these companies are being accumulated. So what might be a good strategy? Well, if these stocks are getting hit to the downside, maybe it's an opportunity. They might be breaking down 18% is a lot, but some of these other companies down three to 5% that appear to be showing signs of accumulation. I mean, you could pull some of them up. Let's take a look at Fort Fortinet. I mean, this stock's been going up for a while. Look at the AD line, AD line right near all time highs or at least 52 week highs. So it's pulling back, it's testing its 20 day moving average. and we know it's got a strong AD because it's in our chart list. We've already vetted it. So um, there you've got that. Um, now, you can also take a look at this and say, well, what about this A10 networks? You know, it's down 18%. Well, I mean, it might make sense. Uh, you know, broke out on very heavy volume. It's pulling back. But, you know, the prior high was 15. 20-day moving average is at 14.19. And the price uh, gap support is down around $14. So, as it gets closer to this area, your risk is going to be less. I mean, if it keeps going down, you get stopped out, you get out of the trade. But this could just simply be a pullback. Maybe we rally all the way back up near the high. Who knows? But once again, you're looking at a stock that's within a chart list that tells you what, you know, what the parameters were, what uh, you know, the filters were in order to create that chart list. Here, we know these stocks are strong AD stocks. How about this earnings AD? So again, if I pull up the uh, edit function, 60 charts, and they're in order of the most heavily accumulated after earnings. Now, they're not all going to work, and I'll show you. This is ABCL. Here was the candle. That's the big hollow candle that got this one on the list. Looks like it opened around 15 and ran to 18, which would be about 20%. Um, that was the biggest move post earnings of any stock. Now it pulled back, got very close to the bottom here, and then actually made a pretty good run. So it certainly could have been a trading candidate. Then it came back down, hit support, and now starting to turn back up again. But that was number one. Number two, we have an earnings reaction portfolio, a fifth portfolio that we tested this last quarter. SITM was one of our stocks in it. And you can see right here, that was the candle. Look at the volume pickup. 
and uh, a company that moved to the upside. And look at what this stock has done since then. After that move, it was at 185. Now, where is it? 267, less than three months later, up probably close to 50% more. Even after all that push to the upside with earnings, it's gone up another 50% since then, just in three months. That's why it's important to be um, at least aware of this. One of my favorite stocks in the market right now is Fastly. I was on the pitch not that long ago. I talked about Fastly. Um, I believe this was a, an exhaustive uh, period of selling, so an exhaustion gap. We've been downtrending, saw the massive volume. To have an exhaustion gap, you need off the chart kind of volume. And that's what we saw here. And look at that hollow candle. That was telling me that the sellers are done. We went back down almost this level, and now we're starting to break up, trending above our moving averages. That PPO is as strong as it's been now for probably the last eight or nine months. Um, so this came out of this earnings AD chart list that I put together. All right, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, I didn't really talk much about it, but we have a strong ETF chart list that we do. We update this chart list every month. So if you're a fan of ETFs, we put these together. And you can be putting together in your own chart list, whatever you want. I'm just showing you how we actually use chart lists in our business and provide these to our members. That's how important I think this feature is at Stock Charts. Um, but you can, again, look at the edit. You can see we have 105 charts right now on this strong ETF chart list. It was updated just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so it'll give you a pretty good sense of the various areas of the market that have been doing um, you know, pretty, pretty well. Um, I know one area of the market just breaking out is the S&P 400 mid cap stocks. Now, this is the value portion of the mid cap. But many of the mid caps uh, are doing really well right now. There's the Schwab US mid cap ETF. So that's on the list. So you see an area of the market that's doing well, and you can come in here and try to find, look for um, ETFs that kind of fit that theme. All right, I mentioned seasonality. Well, here is your seasonality chart list. So you've got um, these, I rank them. 1 to 20. Now, this is for October. I'm getting ready to do the same thing for our members for November. But here's your top 20. This tells you of the last 20 years, how many, you know, 75% of those years, FFIV has gone higher. And for the month of October, the average going into October of this year, the average October return was 12.5%. And you can see Google, well, Google just had an explosive move to the upside. Um, and this was in the month of October. So we provide this to our members. They got this when Google was down under 2,700. Uh, just recently with earnings, we were up almost near 3,000. So Google, we knew going in that they were typically very strong in the month of October. Look at the AD line soaring on Google as well. All right, um, let's see what else we've got here. Um, I've talked about the portfolios. So I know our best portfolio right now is our aggressive portfolio. And here are the 10 equal weighted stocks that are in this portfolio. So I'll just run you through those real quick. So anybody who is a member knows what 10 stocks we have in here. And uh, these will all be um, updated on November 19th. We do it every 90 days. We wait until after most of earnings are in. So by mid-October, or excuse me, mid-November, we should have uh, most of the earnings reports in, and then we will take these 10 out of the aggressive portfolio, and we will have 10 new leading stocks in this portfolio for the next 90 days. That's what we do every quarter. So Ulta, definitely taking a little bit of a hit here of late. Um, we got Costco in here, which has been a great performer. MSCI, which has been a nice performer, setting new highs. But Darna, this one's been a little bit weaker of late, but I like the stock. Um, FND, this is floor and decor, breaking to new highs. Synaptics, breaking to new highs. TGH, breaking to new highs. Uh, Datadog, breaking to new highs. NVIDIA, breaking to new highs. And Macy's, trying to break to another new high today. So those are the portfolios we put together. And we really do this not in the sense, we're not registered investment advisors, so we can't uh, tell folks what to invest in. But 
we put it out there as an educational piece to let folks know that this is what you can do with leading stocks and leading industry groups. And then we track these. We track these um, and we've got a place on our website. You can go in and check that out. Um, but anyhow, that's essentially the chart list that we have. Now, there are probably a few others, but I think I've gone through just about all of it. Um, I do want to show you one last thing before I wrap up here. And that is if you go back here to the, your dashboard and you go into your scans, what you can do, oops, um, I just would type in new scan. Let me come over here, get rid of this, and then just go down and grab the chart lists. So I showed you the chart list, how many companies are on it. So let's say you wanted to know all the companies that have strong earnings, um, all the companies that have strong or raised guidance. So they have strong earnings. They also raised guidance. And then let's say they have a strong AD line. So signs of accumulation. And so we can add that. And then what you're going to do is when you run this scan, it's going to find any stock that is on all three of these chart lists. So we're going to run the scan and we got 53 companies. These 53 companies we know now have beaten Wall Street's estimates in their last quarter, have raised their guidance, and also have a strong AD line sig signaling the potential for strong accumulation. And I also want you to look at this because I see a lot of software companies on here. If we sort this by industry, look at all the software companies being accumulated with strong earnings, strong uh, or raising guidance, same with semiconductors. So you can do so much with these chart lists once you set them up. Um, I think it's a, a really critical piece of the entire Stock Charts platform, and you really can't take advantage of it unless you're a member at Stock Charts. So again, check out that 30-day trial, test it, look at it for yourself, start organizing your trading and your work, and use these chart lists to your advantage. So I want to thank you for tuning in. I really uh, um, am honored and privileged to be here today sharing uh, what I've learned over the years, uh, especially uh, as it relates to the chart lists. I love the chart list so much that I've actually created a business using the chart list feature uh, for our members at earningsbeats.com. So again, I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at earningsbeats.com. Check out the, all the features at stockcharts.com, but especially uh, I think if you, if you look into the chart list and start using it on a regular basis, it's going to change your trading. Appreciate all of you tuning in. Happy trading.